Hey everybody, welcome back to Biostanders. Been a second, sorry about that, but we're back to a weekly upload, so here's what you can get that up. You know who does the music, it's Gwyn, Shady Cicada, and Kevin McCloud. Go check him out. If you don't, I'm gonna go on another three month hiatus. Let's get back to the episode. Welcome back to Bystanders. Um, it's the penultimate session, which means the second to last one. Uh, my name is Magaplier, and I'll be your guide. Um, <laughs> so, this session kind of immediately gets into it. So all y'all wake up on the escape. Um, you're out there relaxing, uh, chilling out, nice, relaxing, all cool, all that stuff. Thanks, Siri. Um, minus 10 points for Hayden. Minus, minus 10 points. We, we are keeping score, um, and you're, are, you're losing. Yeah, we are keeping Fuck. score, and you're the only one with a negative right <laughs> Please continue. Okay, yes. Um, it's really like early morning. At this rate, I'm wonder I'm going to win. Um, it's not quite early morning. It's probably not around 9 a.m. which you just did. Okay, Damien will be chugging a protein shake before his daily workout and shower with Carl. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's about 9 a.m., so what are y'all up to? His daily workout and shower with Carl. Yeah, no. They're a completely platonic shower. They don't fuck. Very hard. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I, I can neither confirm nor deny that Damien fucks, but if he were, it would be hard. And it would be Carl. <laughs> <laughs> why anyway, why Damien's is drinking a protein shake. <laughs> All right, uh, Carl will also be drinking a protein shake then. Cheers. Yeah, they like. Yeah. When I was a boy, I ate two dozen eggs. Donovan is. Does he have to get large? Exactly. I think I got the size. Roughly the size of a barn. <laughs> Donovan is currently. Uh, he's halfway through making an omelet, but he's looking through the fridge to. He's officially a scientist, an omelet scientist. He knows you can put other foods into foods, but to which extent, he does not know. <laughs> so he's going boldly where no femboy has gone before. I don't know, garlic? Hold on. Fry is crinkling the chip bag right next to the mic. <laughs> uh, Raven is going to walk up behind you. Are you, are you making omelets? Uh, yeah, I sure am. She's the lady who helped you all out through Heartbreak Hotel. You yeah. took her back with you. Yes, love Dream her. woman. Yeah. Yes, dream woman. What, what are you doing? You're making an omelet? Yeah. Um, you want one? Sure. Donovan grabs another egg and just... Uh, I'm currently learning what other ingredients to put in. Uh, Carl, not Carl, Guy showed me how to put in uh, spinach a few days ago. That was pretty great. Uh, but I don't know what else goes into an omelet besides just egg and... Donovan looks at the most versatile food he knows. Da cheese. Da <laughs> Damien's still chugging his protein shake. <clears throat> Jalapeno and onions. Jalapeno is pretty good in an omelet. Ah, I'm, that must mean it tastes great. Here, I'll go ahead and cut it up for you. Thank oh, you. No. Has Donovan ever had a jalapeno? What do you think? <laughs> you know, it adds a bit of kick to, this, uh, to the dish, but I think it really adds a lot to it. Uh, you can put know what a milk kick is. You can put just a touch of milk in the omelet as well to kind of give it some fluffiness. All right. right. Donovan poured a bit of milk in. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. By the way, it's uh, it's Raven, isn't it? Yeah, Raven. I helped the other folks out of Heartbreak. I know. I, I didn't get the chance. Donovan like, grabbed one of her hands, just like clasped it. Like, I did not get the chance to properly thank you for making sure they got out of there sane. I don't know who would have started killing each other first, but I know it, it would it, that would have happened eventually. David was going nuts. It was too quiet. He couldn't punch the walls. There was... Uh. I'm just glad we got out of there alive. David would have been me the too. first. Me to too. Believe me. Of, if, if, he would have been doomed if he couldn't fly down the hallway screaming with shotguns. <laughs> I, I officially owe you a favor, Raven. Thank you. From the bottom of my heart. I appreciate it. Let's make this omelet. Let's go. So you all make the omelet. Do I get a roll some uh, omelet roll for this? Uh, yeah, give me an omelet check. Omelet check. Uh, <laughs> we'll give it wisdom and we'll give it advantage because Raven's helping. Like a yolf for Great start. Roll for Woo! Eight. Eight. Um, do I get so to add you come out with... Do I get to add anything to this? Um, Are you proficient in omelet? I, I said you'll add wisdom. Yeah, yeah. I just so. remembered. <laughs> <laughs> so your word, let the, the word add. What happens when we add the number negative one to the roll nine? So you get a seven. No. The roll nine. Oh. So you get an eight. I thought, I thought eight was I thought eight was your result and you didn't add your wisdom. This is why we have to explain what penultimate means. <sighs> mm, that was in a parallel universe. Oh, you're right. Um. 
Several guys. That's me, that, that's me eating the past. <laughs> um, so, it's yeah. A- you create an omelet, which isn't great, but it is still... I mean, it's a, it, you make scrambled eggs. It's hard to fuck up an omelet. You, you end up making scrambled eggs. Uh, not that they hard. Look okay. Well, this omelet is a lot less half-circle-shaped. He looks at, like, the war zone he's made. You just created scrambled eggs. Like, there's nothing wrong with that. Oh, right. I know what those are. He pours it onto his plate. All right, it's time to eat this jalapeno scrambled egg. <laughs> 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 Alright, oh, here, let me get you some hot sauce as well. Uh, he has to be at least aware of what hot sauce you, you is, right? You take me for a fool, Raven. <laughs> <laughs> yes. What? What? I'm not, I'm not ready for hot sauce. Okay. Um. D- Damien, like, looks at her and he's like, don't tell him. She, like, winks back at you. Right, so yeah, are, we, are, are we feeling disadvantaged since it's yes, jalapeno we are feeling like, to not cry? Alright. All right, so I rolled a nine. Thankfully, this is a charisma save, so I have a plus 16 to this. So, a, tw- a 25. Okay, but how do you handle the heat? How do you handle... I- I'd say the heat is a separate save. That's a constitution save. Oh, no. Uh, <coughs> 17. Oh, okay. Yes, you handle the heat pretty well. It's a diamond. Yeah. Da- Damon, like... Whoa! He's like, hmm. That is... <coughs> not the flavor I was expecting. Yeah, it's spicy. Spicy. You know, Halo, I'm impressed. So, so maybe you're ready for I hot don't, sauce. I don't think I like it, but I will not explode, which is very nice. Fair enough. David tosses a jalapeno in his protein shake and just drinks it. <laughs> Raven just gives you a look. You, you, you still have the stem in there. You still have the stem in there. You still have the stem in there. He doesn't just downs it. Damien, you still got the. You still got the stick in there. You still got the stick in there. <laughs> he burps, it comes up, he's like, here you go. <laughs> he hands it to you. Why would you do that? Raven oh. looks at both of you. With t- Raven just leaves the room. Donovan looks this blood. Donovan looks also confused as to why he did that. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Dam- even Damien, as hygienically unaware as he is, just kind of stares at you and blinks yeah. as you eat the stem. Yeah. He well, not, well, not that Donovan has a 22 <laughs> Carl con. walks into the room. Oh, is that jalapeno stem? He pops in his mouth. I was going to eat that. <laughs> <laughs> it it, it would have made it sound like a marble falling down a ventilation shaft because I'm done in a brand new iron stomach. With this is what you stomach. don't want to hear in your engine. This is what you don't want to hear in your femboy stomach. <laughs> That's very true. Steve um, enters the room. Why, like... Rubbing his eyes. Good morning, everyone. Hey, Steve, you want a jalapeno for protein shake? No, thank you, though. <laughs> All right. Uh, I'll drink another. Goes to the coffee machine, starts pouring himself coffee, goes to the fridge, grabs a can out of it, gets the mug of coffee, and goes and sits down at the table, uh, pours the ca- can of LaCroix into a cup, and starts <laughs> dual-wielding the coffee. Donovan's, the Donovan's spidey sense goes off, and he looks at the LaCroix with spite. Steve, I know what I just did was a federal crime, but <laughs> you're insane. <laughs> Damien. You hear the phone ring. On the topic of federal crimes. <laughs> is it the... Is Hang it on. The, What's the name of the agent again? Is it the lieutenant phone? This is the lieutenant. Or actually, no. This would be a regular... What's You'd that? be getting a page, actually. Oh, fuck. Okay. He'll check his pager. Uh, it's Detective George. What? He sends back in all caps. Hey, George! How are you loud over the page? Never mind. My caps lock button is stuck! <laughs> <laughs> Okay, just the letters. Thumbs up emoji. <laughs> oh, no, we <laughs> need to give you a call. Okay. <laughs> All right, so you get a, you get a call on the lieutenant phone now. Hey, George. Hey, Damien. What's going on? I'm drinking a jalapeno protein shake, and Steve <laughs> is committing crimes. Yeah. Uh, okay. Sorry. Now my ears are adjusted. Um, I got some more information on the Noah Generation case. On what? Um, the Noah Generation case, the one we were looking into. Uh. I remember we figured out the Pretender's anchor was wax. Uh, there was some kind of thing with the wax in the wounds. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is a potential lead. I just want to have you guys follow up on this uh, check because I did manage to track down the survivor. I pulled a few strings. Uh, if you all could go see him, uh, you might be able to get some more information about Grohl, uh, what he does, how he fights, all of that. So is, so, Sounds like a good lead. Is the, yeah. is the Nowhere Generation like a Foo Fighters album that you're calling this operation? I've never, no, the I, I, Yeah, I don't remember, I, I have not I don't remember that phrase. Before. 
Uh, no more generation. It was mentioned. Uh, like I said, George mentioned it as like the case. Ah, that's just what she's, she's calling it. Yes. Yeah, no yeah, okay. Generation. Okay. Is it a reference to something? Just uh, yes, that's it is, But I will. Not sure. That's fair. I will not tell you. Um. It'll become more obvious later. Okay. Sounds like a good lady. Uh, page me the address. Okay. And she pages you the address. Uh, you see it is for a place called the Floyd Medical Clinic. Thumbs up emoji, sunglasses emoji. Okay. <laughs> um, so you four can head out, I assume, as well as Carl. Hey, Carl, we're going to have to cancel our workout today. Uh, you want to come with us on case? Sure. All right, George needs our help. Donovan scars from the rest of his I have a good lead. Steve now has he's a cup of orange juice, and he's got like a row of the three Steve, drinks right here. Don't. Leave you see me. Act 2 floating behind him. Steve, I will pour that down Make the drain. We need to leave. check. <laughs> Nikki <laughs> bones, bones is Nick, introduction. <laughs> Nikki enters specifically to fuck over Steve's breakfast, which I appreciate. <laughs> bones, that's going to be 27. <laughs> Nikki, Nikki Bones entering the room just to do a speed duel. For the waveform on that looks wild. <laughs> Damn, I am five short. Mmm, mmm. Uh, oh. I'm British, and that was disgusting. What? It makes a good flavor combination. The the bitterness of the orange juice and the coffee, as well as the Lacroix. It's a lot of bitterness, but it comes together really well. Steve, your Steve, your way of eating, eating pizza was weird, but I could at least respect it. This is. Who I don't know where you? this came from. Other than me. A lot of people have heard us in a lot of different ways. Don't Carl's knock until you there. try it. I mean, you can't try it because you... Do you want to try it? No. Okay. I think I will pass. He starts, like, drinking a cup at a time, act two, like, reaching down and grabbing the cup. Just... Didn't we literally use that one drink as an acid weapon? I'm that pretty was, that sure. Was, that was me. And I'm yes, pretty sure the beating heart uses that as a torture technique. <laughs> Then, we, then, then our information is secure. <laughs> That's what Let's I'm go. getting from this. All right, so you all head out the escape docks. Uh, you're all able to find a car. Uh, the truck is unfortunately no more. I'm right. so yeah. sad. Um, I didn't even so know, very I didn't, I didn't as we're I named it. As we're walking down the ramp, uh, Donovan walks up next to Nikki. Hello, Nikki. It is time for Healy lesson number two. This one's about keeping balance on a thin line. Well, have fun, Donovan pushes him. So <laughs> All right. That's probably Make a grapple save. Okay. Because the T-Rex is going to grab you with him. I, roll, I rolled that many. So I am <laughs> an expert. Not an expert, a master at grapples. I have a negative two in uh, de- uh, strength. You can use acrobatics. You can use precision, even. Oh, that's true. What'd you roll, then? Uh, let's see. So that's... 16 plus 18, that's going to be 30! <laughs> I wish you hadn't With said. a 3? <laughs> so, yeah. For context, Ty rolled a 3. So, I, I have a, so did I. I, I have, rolled a non-natural I have a 13 20. power and 18 uh, proficiency bonus because I'm a master at this. Jesus Christ. Uh, oh, so wait, that alone is a plus 20. A 31, so I have a 34 on that grapple. So without crit failing, you can't roll less than a 33 on a grapple check? Correct. Alright, so no one trying to grapple. Uh, <laughs> no, one, no one can test your grapple. Yeah, so Donovan uh, flies with Nikki Bones, but... Uh, <laughs> now it's time for me to make that dex or precision. Right. Uh, but do you really learn whatever you, you want? Hmm? But do you really learn if you cheat it? I didn't cheat. I'm taking him with me. Yeah. There's, there's, oh. no, there's no cheating him. If I fall, he's falling with me. <laughs> <laughs> Training wheels... Uh, that's going to be 21. That's enough. You're able to slide on down as your, uh, your weird rubber mouse ball heelys. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, you're, you're doing great if it's any consolation. <laughs> you reach the bottom Dragging and it's fine. Donovan behind him. <laughs> Lifting Donovan behind him. <laughs> Donovan straightens his tie. He, he was smiling that whole time. His, um, he wears a tie? No, he was smiling the whole time. Oh. His scarf... Uh, on the other hand, it was a flashing, flashing, um, whatever color I associated with Nikki. I think it was yellow. Yes, yellow. It flashes yellow as he flies down the, uh, as he flies down the way. Nice. All right. Nikki, so. Nikki feels the yellow. I like that. Yeah. You all head down. Steve and Damien just observing with their separate <laughs> drinks in hand. Just. You all head down to the floor. Why did you bring that with you? I thought I told you to leave it. Oh, I blended it like you did. 
Mm. Should I not have done that? It's a liquid. In that case, it might be a shake. Steve, give me a speed duel. I'm okay with that. Oh, boy. <laughs> a speed duel. I have act two active, so that is going to be... A lot. 29. Uh, Carl in at one. So he tries to <laughs> grab it and just... Steve uh, just doesn't mix. break eye con- contact with the Heliers. His act two just, like, does a block. <laughs> Wait. And let's keep Steve keep Carl breaking. did a speed duel. Yeah. Uh... And he thought he was gonna win that against Zach too. Hey, well, he rolled a nat one. There's always a chance you roll a nat twenty, like Damian Drake. That's fair. <laughs> Speed duel, go down the stairs. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Grohl, be the one my phone on the stairs. You're a piano player, right? <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <sighs> sure thing, Drake. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so, the five of you head down to the Floyd Medical Clinic, which actually isn't a very uh, long distance to travel. Uh, the question is, how are y'all going to get there? Y'all trying to, gonna, gonna try to get a taxi, borrow someone else's Don't we have vehicle? another vehicle? Oh, borrow? I thought we had another vehicle. Uh, we do. I, uh, we have don't, a van we, of some don't we have a conversion van? Yeah, I thought we had a conversion van. We have a conversion van. Right, because of the old, yeah, you guys have this a is, really this old, is, old feisty falcon conversion I, van. Yeah, I forgot. as long as we're not worried about attention, we could just jump our way there. Mm, I don't, I don't think, think we want to do us. that. <laughs> what? He's, Let, he's got Heelys. Wow, we're, let's keep. I, I thought we were trying to keep things on the down low, and that's coming from me. Get in the van. <laughs> so I should be driving, right? Donovan has become the, the designated driver of the group. <laughs> that's Fair probably enough. good. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Damien, if he's driving, that means we can drink. Carl has somehow procured like a six pack. Of is there beers. a problem? Hell yeah! Is there a problem with drinking and driving? I don't, I don't, I don't, no. Yeah, I would have been drinking anyway, but this works. It's the drunk crashes that cause the problem, not the drivers. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Donovan butt slides over the hood, dukes a hazard style, and slides into the driver's seat. All right. Hell yeah. So Steve's got his concoction of a shake next to him. He's eyeing the beers. I would like to make a speed duel. You know, at a certain point, you're just going to create poison, right? I'm going to make a speed duel. Against who? That's a nat one. Yeah. I'm not going to use struggle luck. <laughs> yeah. You, you, you reach for it, and Carl just... Poof, Weezer just slaps away the hand. Fair enough. You can just ask. You're no, we'll let you create poison. It'll be your funeral. No, yeah, you're 16. That means you're uh, of legal drinking. Don looks, yeah. Oh, British person. Don, yeah. Yeah. Don, Don looks in the rear view. He's 17. Oh, he's 17. Yeah, that means you're definitely within the there, There's a limit to the age you can drink? I'm 16. Uh, oh, I, w- I forgot. In Britain, do you have something like that here? That's what I'm asking. I'll look it up. I've been drinking since I was, I don't know what I want. I don't think I want to canonize him <laughs> drinking at the age of like four or yeah. something, actually. If, if, if Carl said at the right age, Donald wouldn't have said anything. I just forgot. You know what, you're 17. Here you go. How about you? No, wait, I'm 16. I mean, uh, I'm uh, 17. Thank you. Yep, I'm 17. I thought it was like 12. No, nothing is wrong. <laughs> he All just right. adds it into the goop, shakes it up, and then puts a lid on it. Maybe I shouldn't have given you that. Really what fun. the fuck is wrong with you, dude? I think you're going to have to start making rolls. That was the most raw Nicky line I've ever heard. He dropped, like, the persona that he has a little bit for a What the fuck is wrong with you, dude? <laughs> <laughs> that was that was raw Nicholas Calcium for a second there. <laughs> Nicholas Calcium. Is that like, is that like the, at the Halloween version of Santa? <laughs> What? Instead of Nicholas Claus, it's Nicholas Calcium. That's uh, yeah, so you're driving to the Floyd Medical Clinic, and you all pull up in the parking lot. It's a pretty large building. Uh, you can see that it's not the best in terms of like exterior repair, but you do see that um, kind of the entrance and all of that is pretty well maintained, even if the building itself isn't. Is, it, is this like a locally owned urgent care kind of thing? Is this, like, is this a hospital? Um, this appears to be like a hospital and research center. Ah, okay. What well, are we looking was... for here again? You said there was a su- survivor like from the from the town? Yes, you all are here and... Experimented uh, on? Yeah, Dr. George would text you this. You all are looking for Dr. Richard Gilmore. So who's this Floyd guy anyway? Mm-hmm. I don't know. I heard something about like a... Lloyd in Silica, I think. No, he's a he's a rich guy in Crystal City, and he's wouldn't be here. No, Crystal right. City, what's that? 
That's a few states over. Man, we sure are making references to a campaign that our audience doesn't know about. That would never happen. I wonder how Bryce is doing. <laughs> we, have, we have never once made a reference to C4 in the bystanders. <laughs> Sometimes you ought to make jokes just for, just for us. This is so not... who's the scientist guy we're looking for? We're looking for a doctor. Doctor... Doctor... doctor Richard Gilmore? Gil Happy Gilmore? What? <laughs> doctor Richard Gilmore, yes. Yep. We're looking for old Doctor Dick Gilly. Huh? And, uh... Carl's you might want to get that checked out. And, uh, I hope not. <laughs> I like Steve's giggle at his own joke. <laughs> Does Steve laugh like Peter from Family Guy? Hey, <laughs> 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 Lois, I have a plus 30. Aw, oh, jeez. This is worse than that time I use innovations on my penis. <laughs> <laughs> And we're not going to do that kind of way. Since back. Steve is 16 and or 17, I guarantee he's tried that. I will There's, neither confirm nor deny. There is no fucking way a 16-year-old boy with a stand that does that would not have tried that. I know I would have. We're going into the hospital. We're going to the hospital. <laughs> and we're never talking to each other ever Thanks, again. Uh, so you <laughs> go into the hospital. Um, you can see that, like I said, the building itself is kind of old, not super well maintained. But you see the interior is very well kept. You can see that people are in this establishment making a concerned effort to make the place seem hospitable, uh, decently nice, hygienic. Uh, you see, there are a few patients in the waiting rooms and all that, uh, but generally it's a pretty open facility. You can kind of go uh, where you'd like. There is a receptionist at the front desk. Uh, she's kind of looking around, got a very thick pair of spectacles on, just Damien writing on a little notepad. Walks in, looks at the receptionist. He, he like walks in with his arms crossed. He walks, he walks in, looks at the receptionist, and then very loudly, not loud enough so the whole clinic could hear him, says, We're looking for Dr. Dick! <laughs> Who? Uh, he texts, checks his pager. Dr. Richard Gilmore. Oh, Dr. Gilmore, yeah. Um, do you have an appointment? Yes. yes. Okay, uh, could I have your first and last name, please? Name him, Drake! It says here, it was, I, I had a lady who, uh, scheduled you on the phone. She said you, George! Yeah, she said, she said she was your sister. Uh, it's, it's, it's titled under Dim and Dirk. Yeah, that sounds about right. Okay. I yeah. like the idea that she's never heard his name properly because he just screams it at her. <laughs> well, that, that is the character you were cosplaying when you first met her. German hack and slash protagonist, Devil May Sob, I think. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> I forgot about that. <laughs> L, L Video Gaiman, my favorite Detective George, Detective George quote. <laughs> Um, so she kind of like, oh yeah, you know, no, uh, there's an appointment for you in about five minutes. Please feel free to take a seat, uh, and we'll let you in just a bit. Okay, great. So you all kind of sit down in the clinic. You see, there's a few other. I'm assuming she just doesn't have issues with the like 30 weapons I have on me. No, she's not really gonna say anything. You're a six. Yeah, foot you six, wouldn't. You're, you're, you're a six foot six guy who walked in. You do have an appointment. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Yeah. What's what you gonna do? Hey, Hi, you can't have those. What are you going to do? As a receptionist of a six foot six man yelling at his <laughs> lowest voice. <laughs> My inside with voice. Arm to the teeth came up to you. <laughs> I have an appointment. <laughs> You're gonna let, yeah, yeah, no, you've got a point. Honestly, you have so many weapons on you that she does think you're a cosplayer. Yeah, no, that's, why, that's why the thing. Any, why would any reasonable person be armed to that extent? Even unreasonable people trying to do nefarious things probably wouldn't have a flamethrower, a great sword, and three shotguns. Is your pilot light on, on that flamethrower? Oh, yeah, no, he doesn't turn that off. He just keeps okay, it on. Cool. Yeah. So, about four minutes pass, and eventually the nurse walks over, opens the door. Dr. Gilmore will see you now. He's in room 203. Alright, great. The, like six or seven of us are going to walk in with me. <laughs> There's five. Okay. You rounded. Poorly. <laughs> Rounded to the nearest seven. <laughs> the nearest whole seven. That's, um, how, that's how my math works. So you all Base arrive seven. at the office of Dr. Gilmore. Um, I assume, Damien, you're heading the charge since you have the appointment. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, so Damien... All right, I got an appointment with Dr. Dick. <sighs> my name is... My name is Dr. Gilmore. I'm sorry, I Carl, Carl said, and I thought it was really funny. What did you say? Well, Dick means Richard. I don't know. He's Dr. Dick Willie. Dr. Dick Gilly. <laughs> Dick Gilly, yeah. Dick Gilly. That's you, right? It's a, nice to meet you, Dr. Gilmore. Donovan outstretches his hand. 
nice to meet you as well. You are... Uh, Donovan Halen. Yes. Who's Demian Dark? I think that's me. Okay. Demian Drake. Am I, am I saying that name correctly? Good enough. Okay. Um, so let me describe Dr. Gilmore to you. Uh, he, he is, uh, and then we'll shake your hand. He's a middle-aged white man on the shorter side with a moderate build. He has long uh, black hair that is slicked back against his head, a full black beard and mustache. He wears a blue button-up shirt with mini clouds that kind of float across it, and a doctor's coat over that. The bottom half of his body is covered in a blanket, and he's bound to a wheel- wheelchair. He has a large pair of spectacles and a small scar on his cheek. Pleasure to meet you. I'm Stevie Wonder. Stevie. Nice to meet you. Nikki. Nikki. I'm Carl. Charmed. <laughs> Two um, British people. Two British. I think Carl's gotten more British. <laughs> Almost certain <laughs> that is. It's like a slider. Yeah. It's a slider. <laughs> Unfortunately, he has fallen lower on the He woke up today on the wrong side of the bed and became more British. <laughs> he woke up on the Brit side of the bed? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the, yeah, the right side. That's where the driver's seat side. <laughs> <laughs> what a strange day. <laughs> Alright, so Dr. Gilmore kind of looks around. Uh, so, you all are stand users, correct? No, we're getting right into that. Uh, mm-hmm. Yes. What do you mean by that? I'm sorry. <laughs> I'd like you to give... Give, give, go ahead and look at yourself in the mirror. Let's see your outfit real quick. What normal, ordinary human being would wear that? Well, you're not allowed to canonically draw attention to that. <laughs> uh, Why not? Uh, a student. <laughs> also, the detective this is my, on me were standing. Okay, this is my it. school uniform, says Jotaro Kakyo. Yeah. <laughs> yes, Mom, this gold chain was crucial to me going to high school. <laughs> I assure you. They're like, why are you still in your school uniform? I'm sorry, what? <laughs> it's not school. It's drip or drown, <laughs> Joseph. <laughs> <laughs> the school's handing out drip, I'm sorry. <laughs> drip or drown, Joseph. You know what I did to Dark Blue Moon. <laughs> Don't be like him. Um. Oh no, part three spoilers. I take it that means you're also a stand user. <laughs> yes, it does. Um, here, actually, if you go ahead and see. Oh, if you would be so kind as to turn off the light. <laughs> the light turns off as act two just like turns it off, gives a thumbs up. <laughs> Alright, so the room goes in complete pitch darkness for a while, and then you see a yeah, panel You can see Damon's wall. pilot light. Yeah, Donovan stops himself from glowing passively. <laughs> <laughs> you see a panel of the wall just glow very softly, and then kind of brighter and brighter until eventually it appears to be some kind of screen. This is my stand, the wall. And you see he kind of pulls his hand this way, and the bricks from the wall, like shatter into thousands of tiny pieces and fly to where his hand is. Well, he don't need no education. <laughs> Me? Interesting. So what can you do with that? The wall has the ability to display memories, <coughs> events, certain things of significance within a person's life up to the point of their life where I've touched them. It's essentially a way for me to play back memories, things of that nature. We Interesting, that sounds very similar to Dr. A, actually. That's we, what I was thinking. We knew Dr. Armstrong, his stand, uh, The Unforgiven. He had a similar ability, but he could only access the last hour of someone's life he after he died. He worked in the morgue, did he not? He did. He's, uh... I he's forgot, I forgot his name was He Armstrong. worked in the morgue and got turned into an undead. <laughs> he's, um... He's passed on now, but yes. Well, my condolences. He was a good man. Thank you. Did you know him? Mm. I did. We were... We traded notes for a while. Hmm. Um, but I tried to keep our relationship on the down low. We're both stand users. We managed to naturally find each other. I didn't really want to get involved with anything he was doing. He didn't really want to get involved with anything I was doing. But... With stands so similar, I mean, it makes sense that you would attract each other. We have learned that that's the, the trend that happens, that people, especially stands that are similar, tend to navigate towards each other. Interesting. Yes. The Unforgiven is a stand that plays out a lot of detail within the last segment of a person's life. My stand only gets the broad strokes, the important things, events, times, places, things that were burned into someone's memory. So I think that would be useful with survivor, per se. 
The survivor you're looking for is me. Oh. Well, that's handy. I am, to my knowledge, the last survivor of the Nowhere Generation gang. I was an accountant there. And I remember that day when that thing stormed in. He, it, did this to me. Put me in this wheelchair. Ah. Completely severed my spine where it and the pelvis meet. It was excruciatingly painful and I barely survived the process. I tried for many years to fix my ailment, but I couldn't. But that doesn't matter. With my work, I was able to help so many other people. And I'm not grateful for what happened to me, but it is something I've come to accept. So you that happen. You mentioned the Nowhere Generation game. Yes. What does that mean? We were a mafia group who was active in Trivago from roughly, I believe it was the 40s up until, well, up until I got these wounds. Um, I suppose me getting these wounds would have been about 40 years ago? Oh, wow. Somewhere around there. Regardless, I was young. I was barely associated with the gang. I was an accountant. And it's probably for that reason that I survived. I wasn't affiliated with any of the other gang stuff. I was just someone who happened to be there and worked for them. But I think the reason Detective George called you here, and the reason why you all are interested, is because Noah Grohl did this to me. The Pretender did this to me. Oh. And when he did so, the Pretender came into contact with me. So I can play back some of his most important memories up to that point. That would be extremely useful. What is the time frame of your stand? How far back can it go? It can go back as long as it needs to. The problem is I can only give memories of the person up to the point where I came into contact with them. I can't go any further past that. And you said it's more broad than A is perfect. I recall. Yes. That's amazing. Yeah, we can use that. We can use that to find Grohl. Grohl in the 80s. Or at least get a better understanding of him. Well, if we if we know patterns from where he's been in the past, that could tell us where he is now. Mm-hmm. Oops. I mean, he may evade those patterns, but still, it's better than not having him. It's important. Is he aware that you survived? Do you know about your ability? He's not aware, and this is an ability I acquired after the incident. I came into very close contact with a powerful stand user and survived. There's a good chance it would have happened. And it did. Okay. Makes sense. Well, we'd love to see it then. Alright. The wall. Playback. And you see all the lights in the room pop off again, and then the wall begins to roll. You can see it goes a white, and then you start to see colors, shapes. And you notice that the wall is actually doing this by having each of these little individual fragments like move around and shift. So all of these like pixels are made of little wall fragments. Mm, cool. Um, I will say this will engage all of your senses, and in addition, you will hear thoughts that aren't yours. Okay. Oh dear. That's normal. These are the thoughts of Nova at this time. Okay. Let us begin. So, first off, you see a white space fading into yellow, an open window with a softly flowing breeze, the distant laughter of children, the welcoming arms of a mother and father, a crackling fireplace, colorful toys thrown across the floor, a teddy bear. Mother hums a pleasant tune and holds me. And as time goes on, you notice that it's less and less sensory information and more and more thoughts that you can tell aren't yours. The first steps, smiles. Three candles on a cake, blown out after several tries and a bit of help from father. Father's bedtime stories, touching pictures in the book. 
learning to walk, putting on a backpack, getting pushed down by another kid, crying, bandages and sweet words from mother and father, going to the backyard to see dad work with the bees, orange juice and apple slices. I can't sleep, so mother sits beside me. Her fingers dance across the piano keys, smooth and gentle as summer rain. I want to learn to do that. Yellow fades to blue. New shoes and a bag of my own. It's the first day of school. I draw bees and houses, playing with the other kids, smiles from the teacher, helping mom with the groceries. She says I'm so strong to carry the milk all by myself. I smile with pride. A new color TV in our house. Staying up late, drawing pictures in the moonlight, learning piano from mom. I play slow and simple, but mom's there to encourage me, and I'm getting better. Playing catch with dad. Dad just goes to get groceries. I start to grow a lot taller. I learn cursive, how to tie a tie, and most of all, I learn piano. Even when mom doesn't help, I practice for hours on some days. Mom looks really tired. I ask for piano lessons from her, but she tells me, tomorrow, honeybug. Blue fades to gray. Hushed tones and quiet speaking. It's hot at the end of the summer, but mom still wears her jacket pairs and long division. I'm a fast learner, the teacher tells Dad. He looks so proud of me. Mom stops going to work. Dad works even harder, building a snowman by myself. Mom only teaches me piano once a week now. She looks skinny. I hope she's okay. I start cooking so Mom doesn't have to. In the winter, Mom shivers so much. I cuddle up close, but even with all our blankets and me there, She's still so cold. Dad looks scared. I ask him what's wrong, and he tries to turn before I can see the tears from his face. He isn't quite fast enough. Dark days and nights. Spring begins to come. Mom is even colder. I help Dad with the bees when I can. School goes by, but I don't notice it much. My grades start to slip. The teacher isn't happy, and she and Dad have a long talk. Her teacher doesn't bring up my grades again. There's a new look in her eyes when she sees me. I neglect playing the piano. I'm too busy. Gray fades to black. Father speaks with several men in tuxedos outside. I watch from the window. They speak quietly, and then Father is given a big amount of cash. I can't hear what's happening, but I can see Father is grateful. Mother visits the doctor almost every day now. She's on medicines and tonics. Father helps her walk. Slowly... She gets better. I see her smile more. She eats more, puts on more weight. For the first time in months, she gives me a piano lesson again. We have to stop early. She's crying through her smile. Eventually, Mom goes back to work. I focus on school again. Piano, helping Dad, and reading start to fill my days. Life feels good again. I walk back from school one day and see a bunch of men in suits standing in our front yard. Mom and Dad are there as well, kneeled on the ground. I duck behind a nearby tree and watch. The shortest of the men wears gold and silver rings and has a tattoo of a crown on his cheek. The short man says something to my father about money and responsibility. My dad begs. He just needs a few more months. They needed the money so my father could get better, he explains. The short man looks down at him, unflinching. We gave you one chance and you missed it. The nowhere generation always gets paid its due, Mr. Grohl. He pulls something from his jacket pocket. Four gunshots ring out. The sound echoes through my skull, like it is hollow. Father and mother lay on the ground. Father doesn't move. Mother gasps for air, desperately. Blood erupts from the holes in her chest. She starts to crawl away. I stand there in shock, frozen to the spot. A short man puts his foot on her back. Just business, ma'am. The final gunshot rings. Blood sprays onto his hands. Disgusted, he grabs a handkerchief from his pocket and wipes off the remains of my mother. After he's done, he snaps his fingers. Word is, they got a kid. Find him, make an example of him as well. Burn this place down. Put the poison in the back, just as we said. Nobody crosses us and lives. I stand in shock for a cold eternity. The gunshots still rattling through my bones. What's left of my parents strode across the red lawn. I run as fast as I can.
I cry, huddled in a cardboard box near the outskirts of the city. It's so cold. I'm wrapped up in a jacket, but for some reason I just can't stop shivering. I hear a rustling in a nearby trash can. I jolt up, scared that they somehow found me. I don't move. I can't move. I am met with a small figure from the darkness. Some kind of doll or something. It moves slowly and with curiosity. It has a hollow torso and a head of green flame. I notice it, but I can't stop crying. Then, it begins to dance. Small, but purposeful movements. It is in pain, but it dances on. I understand it. I pull it close. It's cold. That night, I sleep with the creature held against my chest. Days pass. I realize that I can request what the creature does mentally. It steals small things from me. Coins off the street, pastries from shops, other things. I focus on avoiding the open streets. The nowhere generation is still looking for me. After a week passes, I bundle myself up in a coat much too large for me and walk there, my new friend peeking out from my pocket. The front yard is now a dull brown. The bodies of my parents are gone. Nothing remains at the house. Just ash, bits of foundation, and a single broken piano key. I pick up the key. I go to the backyard, and I see what has been done. The grass is now a shriveled yellow, and the buzzing hives are silent. I walk closer and realize the bees lie motionless on the ground. The hides are stained an unnatural yellow, just like the grass. I am the only survivor of this place that my parents built. This beautiful place that they ruined. My father, who just wanted mom to get better, no matter what. My mother, who took care of me as best as she could, even in her condition, and they killed them. For what? For money? My eyes begin to water, but not out of grief. I have grieved for a week now. I have shed enough tears. Now is the time for action. I look down to my little friend, pointing at the remains of the hives. With my heart pounding, I brought him to the nearest one. I set him down and turned away. I am furious. I begin to shake, and I can't stop myself. Black fades to red. My vision cuts out, but every muscle in my body is tensed. They need to suffer. They need to know the same pain they had caused my parents. One way or another, I would kill them. I would kill every single one of them. I felt a hand on my shoulder. It was cold, but familiar somehow. I turned to see my little friend, now far taller. The beehives had been removed, now just the stained husks lying on the ground. I looked up to my friend. He was around the height and build of my father, tall and powerful. It gives me a look of rage. I nod. We know what we must do. An hour later, several men in suits come by the house. They each have a bit of makeup over their right cheek. I hide in a bush, and the pretender sits hunched in the middle of the ruins of the house, the coat draped over itself. One of the men walks over to the pretender, with one hand in his jacket pocket. He taps its back. In one fluid motion, too fast to be human, the pretender spins around and reveals its full form, towering over these cowards. One of them curses and fires their guns. The bullets sink into the uncaring wax as the pretender moves forward. He grabs the size of the head of the first one. I thought of my persevering mother, who taught me all that I know. The pretender and the other men were showered in fine gray and red mist. The pretender moves closer. I thought of my father. More boats whizzed through the air, like a fly trying to stop an avalanche. The pretender thrust his hand through the torso of the next closest one, pulling out the man's spine and throwing it into a tree with such force that it shatters completely, covering the yard in bits of bone and marrow. The final man drops his gun and begins to run. I let him run for a bit, until the pretender grabs him by the back of the neck. A deep voice that wasn't quite my own emanated from the stand as I spoke through it. Take me to your boss. 
I'll make your de- death quick if you do. He began to move. Not like he had much of a choice. Eventually, I was taken to a seemingly abandoned warehouse. The pretender kicked open the door, throwing the head of our guy onto the main table where the money was being counted. I don't remember many details. I remember the screaming, which was always short-lived. I remember the almost deafening gunfire, the hundreds of bullets. I ripped and I tore. I removed flesh from bone, blood from body, organs from organisms. I remember the short man with the rings. I remember that I save him for last. Before you can see his death, the feed is cut short. When you see a man with short black hair slipped back, get torn in half at the waist. Yeah. The feed cuts silent. Dr. Gilmore sits there and taps his forehead with a handkerchief. You see, <clears throat> you see Damien standing there, his fist clenched, and he turns away, a tear rolling down his cheek. It's a bit of an intense memory. Donovan wipes his eyes as well. Uh, it seems he was pretty much the second after the mother and father got here. He's been channeling him on through his body the entire time. Just kind of passively. I agree for you. Well, however, I cannot say I'm as sympathetic for the rest of the Noah generation. <clears throat> after a few seconds, Damien nods. Honestly, <clears throat> I can't say I would do much different if I were in that situation. Hey, DVH, do you mind giving me a bit of a heal? Um, during that thing, Nicky grabbed the closest thing to him and destroyed it in his clenched fist. That happened to be something made of glass. Donovan gently rests a hand on Nicky's shoulder and <sighs> heals him back to full. Steve has just sat there. He's fallen to his knees, but he doesn't say anything. His eyes are wide. He was ten years old at that point. Ten years old, and he looked through the Nova generation like they were tissue paper. I was just in charge of counting the money. I had just joined. I think that's why he didn't kill me. There was someone else there too, in the back room. I don't know if you would have known about him, but the boss's daughter, Joanne. I didn't know much of her, only she was a young kid, probably would have been six or seven. I don't know what happened to her. Well, we learned how he got a stand. And why he started using it to take out others. That doesn't really tell us how he got to the beating heart, though. He went from a revenge-seeking child to a genocidal adult. I don't... I mean, it's possible he just gave up on humanity, I guess. That is entirely possible, I suppose. I have seen many things in my time as a physician and as a person on this earth. But to see a child who had mastered death like that... I have no idea what he's capable of now. And I can't help you much more, but I do have someone who could. And he pulls out a letter from his back pocket. This is, he hands you the paper. And you see it is a perfect charcoal drawing of you four and Carl. What? Huh? Where, where did you get this? A strange woman gave this to me a year ago. She said you all would be looking for her. 
And she even knew we would bring Carl today. I do not know how. Who was this woman? I don't know. She was a doctor of some sort. I don't remember much other than that. But regardless, if you look on the back of that paper, the information on where to find her should be there. I haven't taken a look at it. I don't want to compromise. Fuck. <clears throat> All right. <clears throat> Sounds like we have a have a lead. Thank you for your help, Doc. Of course. And if you would be so kind. Be kinder, if you can. Kinder than the child's circumstances allowed. People will take second chances if you give them to them. I don't know about Noah at this point, but there might be others that will extend that on the branch, or who may take it. Right. Donovan thinks to, um... Well, I guess... He thinks of, he looks at Carl, first of all. I mean, they're teammates now. He thinks of Abel. Funnily enough, he thinks of Daniel and Ryan. They, they had their second chance, they left. He thinks of, uh, thinks of Rose. Yeah. He thinks of Hound Dog. And Brett. And a lot, every member of the Beating Heart who has defected at this point. That email that Nikki sent was one hell of a second chance olive branch. And there's also the ones we didn't give the chance. Like Rose's partner, whose name I forget it. Is Florence. Her name is Florence Machine. Yeah. Well, we'll do our best. Let's I mean, let's move on to the next league. In Damien's defense, she had it coming with her stick. Yeah, I can really go back on that one. Murder is okay. <laughs> uh, I don't think that was the message no. we were trying to give. <laughs> I think the message is don't toy with someone's emotions. You know? Don't make someone re-grieve again. Maybe you'll fucking die. Maybe, maybe it's a bad idea to make someone relive past trauma. Be rude and be tuned by gotta be shooting, but most importantly, be kind. Also, holy shit, Maggie. That, yes, that was Yeah, nice. holy fuck. That was amazing. Nice. That was very nice. Very, very well done. No, Steve the is. Ability of the stands you take are. Let's find out. Damien's <laughs> still a bit shaken from, you know, having thoughts of seeing his parents die. I'll blame. So Damien's creature, uh, uh, kind of backing out of the room, getting ready to move on. Steve is still just silent. He slowly stands up from his knees, but his eyes are wide like golf balls. He slowly turns around to the door after the others. Sees Donovan there. Takes his arm, grips it, and squeezes. Don- Donovan squeezes back, and no words need to be said. And as he looks in Steve's eyes, his scarf glows green. As he normally, like Donovan's normally like a big ol' hugger, but he's recently learned how to do like the the bro hug. He's like telling him in like snack a fist on the back. <laughs> I love Donovan's character development of becoming a functional person. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. But yeah, just yeah. we move out. Yeah. It's gonna be a bit more of a somber car ride to the next destination rather than the haha, let's drink and drive. That's kind true. of vibe. We're gonna use this break into action to go to the bathroom. Sounds all good. Right. Um, you all are driving along. Everything is going great. Where are we driving to? Um, the you address. all are drive, driving to the address that is going to be on the east side of town. Um, it is... Man, it's so convenient that after all these years, this stuff is still in contained within one town. Yeah. I mean, that's where all the, like, plotting is. I mean, Stan uses it around each other. Yeah, yeah. that's true. <laughs> that's, part of what, that's part of what Bree was talking about, too. Yeah. With, like, all the supernatural force in one area. Right. Yeah. But C4 takes place in Connecticut. Do you know how small Connecticut is? It's Connecticut. It's be busy. Much less one town. It takes longer, it, it takes longer to, to say the state than it does to drive through it. <laughs> <laughs> Incredible. Um, <clears throat> however, you all see something kind of familiar uh, on this address. This is an address to Great Lakes University. 
and all that it says is it asks you to see Dr. Patricia Domino. That sure ain't familiar to me. Great Lakes Universe. I think, we, I don't think we've been to a university. In Patricia. Seven. Would Steve... Isn't Patricia um, Sid's sister's name? Or is that something else? Um, Maggie, Maggie fact-checking. Um, <laughs> two characters can be named the same thing. Yeah. It's possible. It happens. It happened a few times in C4, I think. Multiple people have the uh, same yes. name. Okay. okay. Yes, Patricia New study and points. Patricia Domino. All right, so... Does this, Steve have any connection to this place? Like, would he know of anything here? Um, no. not necessarily. Okay, I'm saying that because However, I think what we what we said is that Steve's sister went on college. I'm just making sure that, like... Um, yeah, I don't think she would have gone here. Okay, great. This is, this is, this is a more local area. Okay. Um, Damien, you were in the basement of... Uh, the Waters Mansion, yes? The place I burned down? Yeah. I was as well. I, is this when we were looking through the files or something? We were... I was in... Uh, wait, the Waters Mansion? Yeah. No, that, that, was, me, that was me, that was me, that was me. Was you. This yeah. is... Oh, this is where, um... Oh, this is where Taylor oh. got her degree. Yeah! Oh, oh right, yeah! Right, 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 okay, right. okay. So, Donovan... Oh, the one. <laughs> yeah. Flat brain blast. Donovan remembers that uh, that's where Taylor got her degree, so it's interesting that we're going back here. So, Steve's on. Uh, might be a connection to the beating heart here, then. If, if disconnected. What's up, Steve? No. Uh, everybody give me a dexterity saving throw. Oh, oh I'm sorry? <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean by that? <laughs> Hey, I need to give me a dexterity. Fun fact, I can now add my proficiency to my dex save. All right, I don't have I don't have my stand active. Uh oh. Yeah, none of us have your, have uh, your stand active. That this catches you by surprise. That being said, thirty. Okay. Jesus. Jesus. None of us have our stand active. Nope. No, because we are. We were just driving. I will, I will describe what happens in a bit. Here, so hurry off. Drive it in a car. That's Here's still a twenty-seven. Go twenty-seven for C. Sixteen. Sixteen. I rolled a single digit. I rolled double digits. I, I rolled a 19 and I, I rolled 19 and I'm proficient, so that helps. Okay. So do we pass with a 16? Um, or do we get to no? Actually, yes, you do. Okay. Okay. Um, I think I might have passed. So all of you are driving along in this SUV, you know, kind of conversion van, conversing yes. amongst yourselves, thinking what's going to happen, and then all of a sudden a you bit. see a pothole cover shred through the middle of the <laughs> conversion van like upwards with such force that it rips it into quadrants and throws it all apart. Holy shit! Before we what? before we fly away, can I try to grab the manhole? <laughs> Not you just save the car! You Not just save the car! <laughs> I just, just want the car. You just reach out, grab it, and fly up into the air with it. You know what? <laughs> Go ahead and give me a speed check. Speed check? Yeah, speed speed athletics. athletics? Yeah. Okay, so athletics, which I am a master in. This is just like disc golf. Uh, that's going to be a 38. Give me that. Give it. <laughs> 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 so from our perspective, we're just chilling driving. And then in a split second, we don't see why this happens. We hear a loud noise. And Nikki goes flying through the roof of the van. All of you, all of you. As we fly. then oh, go flying back. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So so Donovan we... lands still in the seat, still holding the steering wheel. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, the van is really Damien spills his beer. All of you are thrown about. Uh, no! Steve and Carl, you end up in the same place. Um, okay. Each of three of you end up completely by yourselves. <laughs> um, <laughs> and like... <laughs> who, has, who has the highest. Uh, perception out of all of you. I will allow Probably not me. I will allow one person to make a perception. I have good perception because of enhanced hand senses. I have a plus five. I have zero. Go ahead. I plus have a 14. plus ten. Plus fourteen. So yeah, I'm gonna, yeah. I suppose I'll be Steve. Yep, that makes sense. Okay, I have act two active at the moment, so mm-hmm. it's just like the sensory guy sensing. Yeah. I, yeah. Make the check. Oh. I, <laughs> you said who has the highest uh, perception. He yeah, also not followed passing. that up by saying, so I will let you guys roll perception once. See, I'm a fucking dumbass, so... <laughs> so I'm glad Steve has precision, because it kind of covers for you, you know? <laughs> Alright, uh, that is going to be very good. That's good. Uh, 32. 
Okay, so as you go flying, uh, actually from the angle that you're looking down, you can see who was in the manhole. Okay. Uh, you look down and see a very confused Brooks Bundit looking up as he kind of looks around at all of you and just kind of like, wait a second. Who is this again? It's Brooks Bundit. user Mayday Parade. It's Mayday Parade. Oh, <laughs> what? Okay. And Why are you guys, attacking a child again? It was no, uh, uh, well, I guess. He's, he's visibly, like, confused, though, so some sort of weird stand bullshit is happening. <laughs> yeah, uh... <laughs> what the hell just happened? Why am I over here? <laughs> I'm, like, 30 feet away from the road, suddenly. Donovan uh, puts the wheel to the side as the airbag activates or doesn't snack him in the face. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Steve gets a hand to Carl. You okay? <sighs> I think so. Right, Damien is still holding up. his beer, but it has emptied in the flight. <laughs> no! She looks inside of it, kind of frowns, and then punts it into space because he doesn't want to litter. Steve's <laughs> still got his fucking post- potion of instant damage on him, so he's just going to put hook that on his How back. did you keep a hold of that? Because the there is no god, and if there is, he's malicious. That's why he's in the <laughs> I, I said I put a lid on it. God damn it. Are you going to have this this whole session? Uh, what? <laughs> it's, it is a god. She is trans and running the bystander. <laughs> That's really cool. Uh, I, Donovan unbuckles his seatbelt. <laughs> What's happening? <laughs> he turns off the ignition. <laughs> There's no engine left. <laughs> that was a bit more explosive than most of the car crashes oh, the I've been in. Oh, the check engine light's on. <laughs> <laughs> so is every other light. Every light is on. <laughs> Ow. Ow! There's no battery! <laughs> You'll notice the Zero battery is attached, not the engine. Oh my bad! Somehow. He, Donovan opens the door. It makes, it, make, it, it makes a like beeping door sound. Yeah. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. She shuts it forcefully. Yeah, you shut it falls it. off. Yeah, you shut it. <laughs> yeah, you shut it and the thing just collapses. <laughs> <laughs> And I think with that, we will end uh, this episode. It's a bit more explosive than most of the car crashes. I hope you have insurance, Bundren! <laughs> <laughs> it looks like a cave on the sound wave. <laughs> oh, man. Jesus. Oh, no. No, yeah, Steve was the only one who was able to see it. I know, I know. That- Why drink all the, that's why I drink all that milk. Bones. <sighs> Mormon spy. True. That, Jesus that, Christ. <laughs> I did see Mormons. But that's a U-Haul. Sorry. Uh, they walked before the U-Haul. Oh. Like, <laughs> uh... <laughs> they have that U-Haul trailer looking pretty Mormon. <laughs> Part 7. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's confuse Ty. <laughs> You're confusing me. I don't know when either of those Oh, you haven't show seen Part 7? No, I have. I don't remember there being a Mormon U-Haul. <laughs> you didn't read it? Oh, come on. You gotta know about the Mormon U-Haul. <laughs> <laughs> this is on you, Donovan. You should remember. Yeah, this is my favorite arc in Part 7. Did, did they even go to Utah? What, what did Utah have to do with this? Did. Mormon town. Oh, really? It used, yeah. to, it, it used to be Missouri, I think. Which I think they do. There are a lot of them. I mean, they, they started it. Bystanders.